Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your host, Glenn. And Amber, this is going to be a great show. Our mission is really helping everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. So let's jump right in. Today, we're going to go over the top five reasons why you'd want to get into real estate. Yeah, we've been doing this for a long time now, for about 13 years so yeah. far, and still uh, moving along. We've done a lot and changed our lives, and so I think we know a few things about why it's important. <clears throat> been a bit of a cold today, so forgive me if I clear my throat while we're talking, but I want to talk to you about uh, real estate and why it's the best way for average people like us to create wealth. And, you know, what is wealth? There's income and there's wealth, right? Income is what you make when you go out and trade your time for dollars, so you go out and work for somebody else, they pay you. That's the most common way we get income that comes in. But the way to create wealth is to have assets that are worth money, right? To create real true wealth is to be able to have true freedom in your life. And you want to, when you have true wealth um, and you have assets that are paying you income all the time, it's a great way to be able to go out and do the things that are most important to you in life. You know, real estate is just a vehicle to get you from point A to point B. And it's not about the money, it's about what the money can do for you. Wealth is not just about the wealth of just money. <clears throat> it's about wealth of your life. It's about wealth of your health and your wellness and your your charitable contributions, what you can do, what you can give back. That's what wealth is about. Be able to spend time with the people that are most important to you. That's what real wealth is all about. It's not just the money. It's what the money can do for you. Go on great vacations like we do, right? Yeah. With the kids and all that and be able to spend time and bring friends and the kids get to bring friends. We pay for all that and it's not about the money, it's what the money can do for you. So it's, it's, real estate is the best way for average people like us to create real true wealth. It Absolutely. has for us and it's been, been a great life, so. Absolutely, so you know, the next question that people would <clears throat> ask is, how do I get started? And the first step is really get educated. And you can do that. You can um, come to one of our workshop we, workshops. We would welcome you there. That's um, the best way, by the way. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> right, definitely. That's the best way. Um, sign up for this podcast. Subscribe to it so you get all of the tips along the way. You know, the thing with the real estate, though, is, you know, you can go online and there is a wealth of information online. So it's important not to, like, get sucked down the rabbit hole and get overwhelmed because there is just the sheer amount of information can be overwhelming. Ugh. And then <laughs> you go into that analysis paralysis and- You get lost online. Right, so, so find, find something that you wanna focus on. You know, Glenn and I focus on really the fundamentals of how to find, fund, flick, fix, flip, or hold properties. What's flick? flick. Find, <laughs> fun, flick, you know what a flick is. <laughs> just but. flick it into, <laughs> flick it into right. a profit. Um, but we, we focus on those fundamentals and it really has been, like he said, life-changing for us. And then the next thing you want to do is find a mentor. Success leaves clues. So yeah. find somebody that has what you want and then copy them. Do what they did. I mean, I'd say it. like us, right? <laughs> you go to one of our workshops, just saying, and learn from us. But certainly wherever you are in the country, find someone that's going to help you. That's important. Absolutely. And then the, the third step to Can that I is... Can I say this too? <clears throat> we didn't have that when we first no. started. We didn't have a mentor. So I think that's why we're so passionate now. Yeah. We didn't really have anybody we could call, and I, I actually did hire a coach, um, and they were okay, but I had someone I could call once in a while if I was struggling, and just to have someone to call when you're struggling is important. It helps you a lot. And if you have a track to run on to begin with, we had to build our track. We did. <laughs> we provide our way. students a track to run on, yeah. so it just makes it so much easier to, to get going. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is really start to learn your own market. You don't have to know the whole United States or even your whole state. Just pick like a 10-mile radius or a 20-mile radius and focus on that. Get to know your market. That's really, really important. And the great thing about real estate, too, and, and the, the thing that makes it so easy to get started is you don't have to quit your job to do this. Keep your job. Yeah. Do it alongside. You know, Do it in the evenings or weekends. Do it part-time to really people, get yourself going. Most people start that way, don't they? Absolutely. I mean, most, most, people, most of the students we work with, they start part-time. Now, we've had the privilege of seeing a lot of our students start to retire early from their job. That's yep. a common term. I've retired early or... Um, Be able to leave their job because they replace yeah. their income. Or cut down to part-time in their jobs. So they're full-time. They go down to part-time so they can have time to do what they want to do. Again, yep. that's... It can be a very gradual process. You don't yeah. have to totally <clears throat> jump ship of your comfort zone. I think you know? part, part of wealth, too, is getting up when you're through sleeping. That's a common joke we have. We right. say, get up when you're through sleeping. We've got so many children that I can't do that. But I, but I like to do that. <laughs> they're when, still school. When the kids, yeah, during the summertime, I get up when I'm through sleeping, which is nice. But that's that's all part of that wealth mentality that we were always talking about. Yeah, and when we decided to start flipping houses, 
we drove to a seminar that was two hours away. Um, you know, it was a time commitment to go there. It was an all day seminar. We spent, I think it was about $1,000 on yeah. a course because but we wanted the forms. Not, we, we bought a CD and that the the estimator sheet. Right. It was a photo, that was what we really wanted. It was a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, yeah. right? <laughs> but I, but I wanted to have something that helped me um, estimate the house. Yep. And then <clears throat> we came home, and here's what we did, though. We took action. We made an offer on a first house. Remember that? I do. Remember our first house? I remember being at the restaurant and getting the, getting the, the email. We came back. We were at like Red Lobster, one of those restaurants. Yeah. And we sat there. We looked, looked at the phone and said, or that Mexican restaurant. I forgot what it was. But we looked back and said, hey, they accepted our offer. Check yeah. that out. So, yeah, that's how it all started. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. so. Pretty cool. So the next thing that's important is that, that real estate's recession-proof. Now, what do I mean by recession-proof? Recession-proof means that, if you think about it for a minute, when you have a nest egg, so a 401k, a savings account, or whatever it might be, you're, that money, let's say you save $100,000 or $500,000, I don't care what the amount is, let's say it's $500,000. If you save in your lifetime $500,000 and you try to live off the income off of that, that's all fine and dandy, but does $500,000 today, think about, think about it this way, <laughs> $500,000 today is worth $500,000. That can buy $500,000 worth things in today's world. 20 years from now, do you think it's the same value? Can that same money buy just as much? No. So in other words, that money's worth less. Think about the cost of gas, the cost of milk, the cost of you know basic things we have in life and food. Prices keep going up and going up, but the dollar stays the same number. So bottom line is that the real estate, when you buy a house, it always appreciates. Historically, real estate's always appreciated. And rents, if you have rental properties, rents always increase as well. So if you are making interest off of your nest egg, right? You Let's say you save $500,000 and you're making $35,000, $40,000 a year after taxes that you're bringing in on that for income. Well, that's, that's in today's dollars, right? That never, the, the base of 500,000 never appreciates or gets worth more money. It's still, if you're taking the interest off, it's just still worth that. Where in real estate, you, you keep up with inflation because you get rental income that comes in, that will increase over time, and your, the house will appreciate as well in, in, uh, in value too. So. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, Glenn and I, we got started in one of the worst times in history to get into real estate. Our first flip was at the end of 2007. Our second flip was at the beginning of 2008. Right, when it was horrible. It was horrible. And, yeah. you know, you guys may not remember the exact years, but we remember them. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody said, the sky is falling, get out of real estate, you know, and we didn't know any better. And we were just like really desperate and really needed to make some, some money quickly. So we just said, well, we're going to do what we, we want to do. And the thing about houses is, you know, people are always going to need a place to live. And we saw Sold that house for with a thirty thousand dollar profit, over a thirty thousand dollar profit. Thirty three thousand worth, yeah. two thousand over asking. And there was a bidding <clears> war. <throat> yeah, you know, get out of real estate, get out of real estate. We had a bidding war. Yeah, pretty awesome. Number three, it's the easiest way to build a strong passive residual income. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what does that mean? If you're not familiar with residual income, this is a very important concept I want you to grasp today. Residual income is getting paid over and over for something that you do one time. So. When you go out work for your job, you work, you get paid. You work, you get paid. You don't work, you don't get paid. It's as simple as that. Residual income is building up an income, right, from either a business or from royalties or write a book or that kind of stuff, or rental income. Think about it for a minute. Income from rents comes in month after month. It comes in whether you're up in the morning, whether you don't get up in the morning, whether you live in the house you live in now, whether you move to a different part of the country or a different part of the world. That income keeps coming in. You probably pay a mortgage or you pay rent now. Somebody benefits from that payment every single month. As a real estate investor, you get to benefit from that. And we teach you in more depth seminars that we do how to, how to compound that and how to really grow that out. But I can tell you, residual income is where it's at. You really want to have residual income so it gives you peace of mind and gives you freedom in your life. So, you know, that's important because... As you're getting your business started, we would just really recommend that you start it right. Start it being <clears throat> an owner and not an operator. And we, Glenn and I actually, um, well, it was about five years ago because I was pregnant with Cruz. Um, we went to a business seminar, and that was one of the biggest takeaways yeah. we got from that seminar is we were very much operators in our business. You know, it was, it, it owned us. And when we left that, that workshop, we really came back and transformed our business and became the owners instead of the operators. And it just opened up so many other doors and um, ways that we could grow our business in different ways. So that's what we'd recommend is when you start your business, start it the right way. We spent over $30,000 to go to that four-day yeah. function, that four-day event. It was crazy. And with the travel and everything, it was over thirty grand. Then we bought some other stuff while we were there. So worth it, though. But it was worth every penny. It was a big stretch for us, but it was worth every penny just to learn 
how do you maximize, how do you get better at your business so to, yep. build, to build that passive income? And then as you're building that passive income, more than likely that's going to include um, a rental portfolio. Don't be a landlord. That's why people don't like rental properties is because they're getting the 3 o'clock in the morning phone call saying my that. toilet's overflowing or I'm locked out of my house don't or whatever. Don't do that. Don't be the landlord. Again, be an owner, not an operator. Hire a property manager to manage that property so that you don't have to deal with those kind of headaches. And, you know, you build the profit right in as you're, as you're evaluating the deal. And yeah. we teach you how to do all of that, too. And from the very beginning, automate and systemize your business. I'm going to repeat this because you want a business that doesn't own you, but that you own. Right. So you want to make sure, too, that you have income that comes in because things can happen in your life. You know, if you've been to our workshop and if you haven't been to our workshop, I'll just I'll kind of some, I'll give it make it a short story. But um, life can life life will hit you when you're not looking. Right. And things can happen that uh, will make you have to change your focus in our life. Um, I'll, I'll try to make this short as I can. Amber was hospitalized uh, when she was pregnant with Cruz at uh, 22 weeks. Yeah. And so she stayed in the hospital for six weeks to 28 weeks, and he was born a preemie. And we almost lost him. He almost didn't make it the first night. And he had to stay hospitalized at the NICU for 87 days after that. So we were a, a cumulative of five and a half months in the hospital. I literally went to my team at that moment and said, guys, I'm out. I am tapping out. I cannot work. You know, I can be available for a phone call here and there, maybe a couple times a week. But I am really going to be out of the day-to-day operation of the business because I have to deal with my family. Because for us, family is number one. Oh, my goodness. And so we said, this is it. And we have to be with my family. I had to travel to the hospital every day and take care of our two-year-old daughter. And at the time, our whatever our kids were, uh, two and I guess Peyton would have been nine and Dakota right. would have been 13, 14, yeah. whatever it was, and sports and school and all that stuff. We had to figure everything out. And it was a very challenging time. But because I had residual income, because I had income that came in from the business, I was able to leave and go with my family. And our team actually bought and sold 20 houses during that time. So it was very powerful. But if, if we didn't have income that came in, not a job, at, but income that we built from a business, we wouldn't have that freedom and that flexibility. And that's why real estate is really powerful. So Yeah, it's really huge. And number four reason is you get to be your own boss. You know, like Glenn said earlier, wake up when you wake up, not when the alarm clock goes off. Wake up when you're done sleeping. And then um, the other thing is when you help, when you work for somebody else, you're not making your dreams come true. You're supporting them and helping their dreams come right. true. So right. whose dreams do you want to work toward? Right. You know, what's what do you value? What's more important to you? You get to set your own schedule. You're not told when you have to go to the bathroom or you don't have to ask off for vacations. We were um, in Europe this summer and our flight actually got canceled. We didn't have to call our boss and say, sorry, I'm going to be in extra day on vacation. We still wanted to come home. We, we did. Were ready, we, were, we were ready to, we're ready to come ready. home. Yeah, we were ready to come home. But. But, um, but still, we didn't have to make those phone calls and ask for time off. We, we have that flexibility and that's what we want to share with you guys is, is that you can do that too. And um, you mentioned earlier too that when you work for someone else, your worth is really determined by what someone values your efforts for. And whenever you're your own boss, that's not the case. You you get what you put in. So, you know, if you want to really go at it and do something big, you can. So that it, it's really a great thing to be your own boss. So how do you get started to do that, to be your own boss? Well, get yourself fired. You know what I mean? Do something inappropriate. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't do anything like that. But, you know, you want to make sure that you can... Uh, um, strategically you'll get yourself out of the job. What I say is start alongside your current position, start to build an income, start to start to learn how to be a real estate investor with, with investor, <laughs> investor, whether you wholesale, whether you flip, um, you know, if you decide to build rental income, whatever you're doing, start to build an income alongside your current job. That way you have options. You may love your job, but your job may not love you someday. I've seen good friends be in yeah. high up positions and be marched out with a box. Because they walk in one day and there was a budget meeting and somebody at the top said, he's gone. Or the company gets bought by another company and brings in their own people. Or My brother worked for Kodak for 30 years in Rochester. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a company missing the mark. And uh, and they literally, had, he went through like 28 layoffs. And one day he called he called his brothers and said, he called all of us and said, I kind of think this week's going to be the week. Sure enough, they walked in. That day they walked him out after 30 years of the box. So if you build something alongside your current job, then you have options if something happens. Or if you choose to, you may say, listen, my income now is surpassing my income. Maybe I have options. Maybe now I can walk away. And that's going to bring you a level of freedom that you probably never had before. Yeah. Glenn's always pretty much been an entrepreneur. So he's always been his own boss. And yeah. I actually work for my family's company, if you remember from our introduction podcast. But 
I didn't just want that. That was kind of a job, and you know, that was a business that would own me if I was going to take that over when my dad retired. And I just, I didn't want that. I wanted something where I could actually create true freedom, and that's what we get with real estate. Number five is you can create a legacy for your family. And so what does that mean, a legacy? Sometimes people say, well, I'm not the Rockefellers or I'm not the whatever other family, the Vanderbilts or anything. Well, you can be. So you get to create a legacy for your family. And it may not be at the grand scale of worth you know, billions of dollars, but you don't have to be. You can go out and start to build rental income and portfolio. Now, think about it for a minute. If you build a rental portfolio alongside your job even, or if you do it full time, whatever you do, and you just pick up a couple, three of those a year, well, over the course of the next 10 years, you're talking about 30 houses. You're talking about bringing an income of $30,000, $40,000 a month in positive cash flow. And I, we teach at our workshops how to do that, how to do that with other, without using any of your own money. Um, it's a really great, it's an awesome program that we teach. But I, I would tell you something, that when you build that type of an income, when you leave this earth, God willing, you're old and it's, you've made it 100 years plus and it's a great life. But that rental income continues to pour in. And remember we said it beats inflation. It continues to increase in revenue. And if you have a property management company taking care of it, it's, it works like an investment. It doesn't work like you going out there and doing the work yourself. It's an investment. And those property values are worth more money. So you've got a portfolio worth tens of millions of dollars that brings in hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in passive residual income that when you pass on, that goes to the next generation. And guess what? When they pass on, that can go to the next generation and so on and so forth. That's leaving a legacy. That's people saying, wow, what a legacy. And not to mention that, we talked about wealth at the beginning of this podcast. And think of all the things you can do with your family with that kind of money too, all the experience you can create and memories you can create too. So really important to uh, to get started on building a legacy because real estate's the only way that average people like us can create a legacy. Unless you win the, million, win the lottery, and it has to be a big number, unless you win that, it's really tough to build a legacy, but you, you're not going to do it with your job. You want to will your job onto your kids? Mm-hmm. How fun would that be? Thanks a lot, Mom. I always want to do that for a living. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I always wanted to be an engineer. I always wanted to work for McDonald's or whatever it might be, right? You don't want to, no one wants to have, you don't want to will your job onto your kids, but you can will your income, not your, you can will your business and your income onto your kids. Yeah, and hopefully they make good choices <clears throat> in it. <laughs> I can't control what they do. I can only control that I give it to them. I can't control what they do after I pass. So, But Glenn actually, during our home flipping workshop, Glenn actually does a presentation. It's his favorite part of the presentation yeah, where he favorite. shows how to actually build that portfolio. And sometimes, you know, in the beginning, it might seem a little overwhelming. Oh, my goodness, a legacy. How I'm, that, That's going to take me years and years and years. That presentation, like, lays it out. Not pie-in-the-sky numbers. I mean, it is, like, super realistic and very, very attainable. But the thing is... You just got to start with one. Yeah. Start with one. And then it's kind of like that saying, you know, you see on the shampoo bothers, lather, rinse, repeat. You start with one, then you do another one, then you do another one, then you do another one, and then you're just adding and adding to your portfolio. We've only been um, doing rentals for what, two or three years now? Yeah, but almost uh, about three and a half years. Three and a half years. Time goes fast. It does. Um, but, you know, we've got over 40 houses in our rental portfolio. Now we we're do. starting our Airbnbs. And, you know, life is really, really exciting. And our retirement portfolio is looking yeah. better because of that. And um, it's, just, it's just really great. So here, I want to recap. Let's talk about recapping the f- top five reasons why you want to get into real estate. Um, I'm going to look down on computer so I don't forget anything. Number one, it's the quickest way that average people can build wealth. Yep. Number two, it's recession-proof. Number three, it's the easiest way to bring in strong residual passive income. That is so huge. Um, number four is you are your own boss. And number five is you can create a legacy for your family. Like we always say, it's helping everyday people create their best life through real estate investing and also creating wealth through real estate investing. Absolutely. So it's Again, the wealth part is wealth and it's your best life now too. So guys, we're wrapping up. I just want to tell you this. Don't settle for a mediocre life. I think we give, we're given one chance to be in this earth. And I think it's really important that we give it our all. And real estate investing is simply just a vehicle to get you from where you are to where you want to go. And if you've never, if you're watching this, you're probably somebody who's been dreaming. And if you've never been dreaming before, please follow us on social media and look at all the people that lives that we're changing. And, you know, don't settle for that average life. You have so much more in you, but probably it takes money to, to overcome. You know, money won't bring you happiness, but lack of money brings tremendous stress in your life. You've maybe heard me say that before, but it's really crucial that you take action now towards those goals. So don't just think about the goals. Don't just dream about them. Think about the life that you want to have, but then start taking action towards those goals. That's the number one thing I can tell you is to take action towards it. I will tell you this, building a rental portfolio in an empire that's going to leave a legacy won't be easy. 
If you ever hear someone say it's going to be easy, they're lying to you. We've never had it easy. No. And even some days are not easy. Today was a tough day, right? There's just, just stuff that happens in life. Just because you're just because you go into real estate investing doesn't and you make money doesn't mean you have less problems. You probably have more. But if you can navigate all those things, it is hard. But I always say to people, it's hard, but it's, it's worth, worth it. it. It's a hundred percent worth it. So take action towards your, towards your goals and um, you know start building the life that you were actually meant to live, not the one that you maybe settled into, but the one that you're actually meant to live. So you have been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. And if you found value in this podcast, please write a review for it on iTunes. And by all means, share it with anybody that you think could also get value out of it. And um, find us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all the good things at Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Cool. So remember that everyday people really do create wealth through real estate investing. We're everyday people, and we did. Real question is, will you be next? All right. Next week, we will be discussing to flip or not to flip. So we'll see you there. See you there.